For Korean immigrants struggling to adapt to a foreign life and for patients who receive free medication from the Philip Jason Memorial Foundation in Philadelphia. Dr. Philip Jason is not merely a legend but a lived experience. Famous as the founder of a newspaper, The Independent, Independence Club and Independence Gate, Dr. Jason is still revered as a pioneer of modernization, exponent of democracy and champion of the independence of Korea. What does Dr. Philip Jason teach us today through a variety of traces he left in history ranging from the Kapshin Ku to Japanese occupation and liberation? On December 4, 1884, radical reformists staged the Kapshin Ku d'etat to fight for reformation during the opening ceremony of Ujongu, the first post office where high officials and foreign diplomats attended. The leaders were Philip Jason, Kim Ok Kyun, Park Yong Hyo, and So Kwang Bam. The Kapshin Ku was short-lived, collapsing in three days, and this event changed Jason's life forever. The Korean government sought to arrest Jason and his colleagues, but they could manage to escape through the port city of Incheon and then to Japan. In 1885, they boarded the Empire of China in Yokohama and arrived in the United States after a two-week voyage. The only thing that they carried was a recommendation letter written by a missionary. We don't have any friends, money, and money. We don't have any friends, money, and money. We don't have any friends, we don't have any friends. We don't have any friends, we don't have any friends. We don't have any friends, we don't have any friends. California Hayane Puchakan Sregigachi, Meroko, Kayovsoboinan Chunjadri. At that time, the American press portrayed them as emigres from the land of hermits. They reported that Jason and his colleagues had enjoyed a splendid life, even though they were living in misery in a foreign city. News coverage was so sympathetic as to describe them as active followers of progressive causes rather than as passive victims of misfortunes. Jason got a job in a furniture store and worked very hard while receiving low pay. During the day, he delivered advertising leaflets and at night he studied using a self-made dictionary. He attended church every Sunday in order to learn English and Christianity. Jesus Christ was his only comfort. It was at church that Jason met a coal magnate and philanthropist, John Wells Hollenbach, who encouraged and supported Jason in his education. One and a half years later, since he had arrived in San Francisco, Jason left for Wilkes Bar, a small town near Philadelphia.
In 1886, Philip Jason entered the Harry Hillman Academy, a private college preparatory high school that Mr. Hollenbach founded and sat on the board of directors. It was during this period that he changed his name from his original Korean name, So J. Pil, reversing and anglicizing the characters to Philip Jason. According to his academic transcripts, Jason earned outstanding grades. His dream could not stop there. He went to Washington, D.C. and worked in the Army Surgeon General's library. Translating Chinese and Japanese medicine books into English, he became interested in medicine. Jason then applied and was admitted to the medical department of Columbia University, now known as George Washington University. He became the first Korean to earn a medical degree from an American institution in 1892. Along the way, he also became the first Korean to obtain U.S. citizenship in 1890. At the age of 30, Dr. Jason met an American woman, Muriel Armstrong, and married her in 1894. Mariel Armstrong was from a renowned family. Considering that newspapers reported his wedding ceremony, we can imagine that he was already well known in the U.S. at that time. His wedding was the first comfortable settlement after 10-year life as a political refugee. But Korea was waiting for his return. In the meantime, the political climate in Korea was becoming gradually favorable to enacting modern reforms. Freed from the charge of treason, Dr. Jason returned to his homeland and initiated various reform activities. Working as an advisor to the Privy Council, he set to publish The Independent, the first newspaper printed in Korean and English. In the first issue, Dr. Jason emphasized making fair judgments on all social issues without any political bias. Dr. Jason also made the newspaper reading easy for everyone by using the Korean language character set instead of the complex Chinese language to ensure that it can serve as a forum for public opinion and debate. Relating to his poignant experience of the caption coup, he realized that no revolution could succeed without educating and mobilizing people. At the same time, Dr. Jason organized public meetings and lectures to instill the spirit of progress and reform in the general public. To encourage the reform movement, he organized a student association, Hyup Song Hui, at Beije Academy. He also founded the Independence Club and constructed the Independence Gate to declare the Korean people's will for independence throughout the world. As many as 6,000 people gathered to celebrate the groundbreaking of the Independence Gate. Teaching that national sovereignty lies in people's hands, Dr. Jason strived to cultivate democratic and critical thinking. The Independence Club, originally formed to build the Independence Gate, at first allied itself with the government and subsequently developed into a populist organization. As people from all walks of life increasingly showed support for the club, Dr. Jason accused imperialistic nations of conspiring to occupy Korea. He was not also reluctant to suggest measures to constrain King's absolute rights. Through the newspaper editorials and public speeches, Dr. Jason incriminated Russia and Japan, which were becoming increasingly influential in the international scene. In retaliation, they attempted to exile Dr. Jason back to the U.S.
In the end, Korea became prey of Japanese imperialism. Dr. Jason worked in the Wistar Institute at the University of Pennsylvania. He seems to have worked on publishing medical books. In 1904, he started a printing and stationery business in Wilkes Bar and Philadelphia. The business was so successful, he employed 70 workers. In those days, family life was also hopeful and peaceful with his two daughters. But before long, he had to engage in politics again. On March 1, 1919, Korean people staged a nationwide uprising when Japanese military occupation reached its culmination. Japan oppressed the non-violent resistance with military forces, resulting in a massive number of casualties. 7,500 were dead, and 16,000 were injured for the first three months. The Sam Il movement created a worldwide sensation. Foreign press covered it as big news. On receiving the news, Koreans in the U.S. began to mobilize. Philip Jason organized the first Korean Congress with Ri Sung Man and Jung Han Kyung, and they marched through downtown of Philadelphia. The participants numbered as many as 150. Given the fact that only 1,000 Koreans resided in North America at that time, it was a remarkable turnout. Even though the vast majority of Koreans lived in the West Coast, the Korean Congress was held in Philadelphia because they regarded Philip Jason as their guiding beacon. 30년 전 인천항을 떠날 때 한인들이 죽은 백성인 줄 알았습니다. 그러나 1919년 3일 운동을 보니 산 백성인 줄 알았고 이런 백성은 반드시 자유 독립을 하고 말 것으로 믿었습니다. 그래서 내가 연설도 하고 선전 사업 활동을 시작하게 됐습니다. During the first Korean Congress held for three days from April 14th, participants discussed various ways to organize Koreans in order to create international awareness of the Samil movement. In an effort to raise the agenda of Korean independence, Dr. Philip Jason established the Korean Information Bureau and printed a periodical, Korea Review. Several chapters of the League of Friends of Korea were also organized throughout the U.S. The League submitted petitions to the U.S. government for the cause of Korea and held public meetings. The League succeeded in winning American public opinion. Even Sidney Kulik, who was favorable to Japan, was affected by the League and sent a letter protesting Japan's oppression governance. In 1921, the Disarmament Conference was convened in Washington, D.C. The United States, Great Britain, France, Japan, and Italy were among the major stakeholders. Dr. Jason believed it was a golden opportunity for furthering the cause of Korea. He organized a Korean delegation and sent a plea to the Secretary of State, Charles Hughes, claiming the legitimacy of Korean independence. The focal point of his activities was the press. 
From the 1920s to the 1940s, he actively contributed articles to many newspapers and magazines, such as the Donga Ilbo, Chosan Ilbo, Shinmin, and Shinhan Minbo, emphasizing the importance of Korean people's unity. In doing so, he had to sacrifice his private property and whole life. The Korean Commission to America and Europe discontinued financial subsidization for Korean Information Bureau. Huge expenses went into maintaining journals, meetings, and legal assistance from top lawyers. Coupled with economic depression, his business went bankrupt and his house was pledged. To support his family was extremely difficult. Dr. Jason had to enter medical school again at the age of 62. In spite of his age, he conducted a great deal of research and published five journal articles. At that time, he suffered tuberculosis due to fatigue. His wife also passed away. At last, Korea regained independence in 1945, and many overseas political leaders returned. Dr. Jason also came back due to the strong request by another leader, Kim Kui-shik, who admired him. A large crowd welcomed his return. Korean people expected him to play a critical role in rebuilding a new nation. In particular, they eagerly waited for a figure who would unite people amidst political fragmentation. Some people claimed that Dr. Jason should replace Ri Sung Man to be the first president. But Dr. Jason did not have such political desires. His activities remained in the non-political realm. As an old man, I don't have any ambition. High status or an honorable position is meaningless to me. My prime interest is to educate people. Korea was divided into two separate nations. As Ri Sung Man was elected as the first president of South Korea, Dr. Jason decided to leave Korea. Perhaps he intended to avoid further political turmoil. Dr. Jason went to the U.S. leaving behind his divided homeland. Betraying his earnest wishes, the Korean War broke out in 1950. 
아니 왜 죽을 일을 할 묘리가 있습니까? 살 떨이들을 하셔. 인 the following year, Dr. Philip Jason passed away, leaving his spirit as a legacy to the Korean American community. In 1977, the Korean government honored Dr. Jason by awarding him posthumously the Republic of Korea Medal in recognition of Jason's contribution to National Foundation. His remains were repatriated to the National Cemetery in 1994. His lifelong dedication to progressive reform, modernization, independence, and democracy was highly appreciated. Dr. Philip Jason lived an extraordinary life replete with dramatic events. He was a great advocate and champion of modernity, independence, and democracy. And his spirit contributed to the recent democratization of Korean society. Dr. Philip Jason's noble life left an indelible mark on our history. <laughs> Thank you.